One of the things I love about cooking is, it, in a way, it's kind of a time machine. This is my mom's chili recipe, and I will never type this because it's uh, it's in her handwriting, and that's awesome. I love that about my family. I have a lot of memories wrapped up in some of these recipes and these flavors. Um, cheap meat. Use cheap meat. Use cheap meat and figure out what cuts you like and what cuts you don't like. Learn the cuts of meat. In this case, um, we're making chili, which just uses cheap meat. Um, you can use top sirloin if it's cheap. You can use top round because it's cheaper. You can use chuck roast. I think I managed to score, uh, these are chuck shoulder roasts, so they're cheap and they're awful if you try to cook them like a steak. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in the magic pressure cooker. The pressure cooker simply takes long cooking recipes and turns them into convenience fast recipes. So uh, I'm going to cut up these this meat into chunks and show you after we come back I'll show you how we season it and how we put it in the pressure cooker and make it amazing. All right so I've cut it all up. Now this is cheap meat so there's a lot of connective tissue. I've carved all that out. It's probably about a pound so you got to plan for that. I'm just going to do some salt and some pepper on the outside. And you've noticed probably by now that I double, I twice cook just about everything. And that's because I like the layers of flavor that it gives me. So in this case, I'm just doing uh, black pepper on there. And then I'm gonna, oh, here's my recipe. Uh, do my black pepper on here and just sort of massage it into the meat. Then what I do is a batch at a time, it's gonna go into the pressure cooker and I'm gonna just get it brown on the outside. All I'm gonna do is two sides. I'm not cooking it through, I'm just putting flavor on it. So just getting a little bit of a sear going, and that's it. I'm gonna cook all this up. When I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what your meat should look like. It should just be brown. I do it only on two sides, and these are still raw in the middle, okay? It's just flavor. We're just, we're just cooking that so that it's flavorful. Inside here, more flavor. Don't wash that out. Deglaze it. So how do you deglaze? You pour water on it so that you get steam and then you stir it without burning your hand like that. And now you can see the bottom of the pan. Okay, so that's deglazed. All that flavor is now in these roasted tomatoes. So this is a happy accident. We used to use tomato sauce, which you can still use. But um, Mary Jane accidentally bought, uh, brought back some roasted tomatoes from the cornucopia, and it turns out it's way better with roasted, fire roasted tomatoes. So that's just crushed fire roasted tomatoes. I've got some dry ingredients. I've got some cumin, and I've got some chili powder. We are making chili. Um, I should mention that this is sort of a Texas red style. So it is, uh, it does not have beans in it. Um, that's from some other part of the country where they don't know how to eat. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so that was garlic. This is Worcestershire sauce. And I'm just gonna stir that until it starts to come together and there's no dry spice left. The last ingredient is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, four squirts or more of Tabasco sauce. And then all the meat goes in. This is gonna be too big to pour, so I'm just gonna dump it with my hands in here and all that meat juice oh yeah that's going in there too just like that okay once you get it all in <laughs> been fighting with our uh, our smoke detector so i'll try to get through this before that goes off all i'm doing is smashing the meat down and then i'm putting the lid on it locks like all good lids do it locks and then you push it up, bring it to a boil, let the steam come out, cook it for an hour once the steam starts. It'll cook for an hour. So we'll okay, so I've had this thing on high heat for about 10 minutes, and just now the steam has started to come out. So now is when I start my time for my chili. And I'm gonna cook it for about an hour. As the pressure continues to build, more and more steam is going to come out. So I'm going to keep working the temperature down to maintain the steam level. That is just a gentle percolate. You don't need it to be going crazy. But I understand on the new pots, you don't have to do that. You just set them and forget them. But since this one is manual, I'm old school. I'm going to move it from this high flame over to this lower flame. 
and then ultimately to that little tiny burner in the middle because the cool thing about the um, cooking with a pressure cooker is that it saves energy because once you get the thing cooking, you can turn the gas almost all the way off and it'll just keep on cooking. So we're gonna try to maintain about that much steam coming out for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, depending on how much meat you have and how tough your meat is. All right, so uh, the timer just went off and turn this off. This puts out a ton of steam when you, when you off gas it. So I'm gonna do that and put a towel over it just to kind of catch the steam and keep it from hitting the, the uh, uh, stove. When that's done, I'll be right back. Okay, so the pressure's off. We're gonna release the lock, open the top, and that is our beautiful, beautiful chili. If you wanna thicken it, you can thicken it, but what I wanted to show you is uh, what that time in the pressure cooker actually did to this chili. Usually, when it's totally cooked through, you can just break it just with chopsticks like that. It's no big deal. And it's super tender. It tastes amazing. But this isn't even dinner tonight. We're doing pizza. The secret to really great chili is let it sit overnight. Tomorrow, this is gonna be amazing. And I've got enough here for at least six meals um, for that small investment in, uh, in meat and in time. So we're gonna divide this up into a bunch of Tupperware, freeze some of it, keep some of it for uh, dinner tomorrow night. And uh, thanks for joining me again. I love you guys, bye.